So, what has financial independence meant for Harry and Meghan? We know that in 2020, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, Duchess of Sussex, made a historic exit from royal duties, a move widely known as Megxit, right? Some may say that's a term of endearment and others not so much, but Megxit, okay. This decision followed relentless media scrutiny with the Duchess of Sussex alleging that she had been fed to the world by members of the royal family who were complicit in these media persecutions. So the culmination of their exit was the Sandringham Summit, as we recall, right, where Queen Elizabeth, Prince William, King Charles, Prince Harry, and other senior courtiers had convened prior to the Queen's death to negotiate the terms of the Sussexes' departure. We know the Sussexes wanted a sort of part-time, half-in, half-out arrangement, and that that was roundly rejected by all parties. Their move, however, to North America, first to Canada, then to uh, California in the USA, stirred controversy to say the least and it marked a significant break from royal tradition so if we recall back four years ago amidst their transition we had media mogul tyler perry who offered his los angeles home to the sussexes and provided them with a sanctuary you know so they had their first start in his mansion in Los Angeles. And then there was their candid interview with Oprah Winfrey in 2021, which further illuminated their struggles and their aspirations for independence, including financial independence. And the interview with Oprah, as we recall, coincided with their lucrative deals with Netflix and Spotify including the production of Megan's Archetypes podcast and Harry's memoir, Spare, which became a bestseller, a runaway bestseller, really. So as far as what financial independence actually means for them is, you know, they established a stable base in California and they purchased a new home and a, a castle, really, a mansion in Montecito near the ocean in an area known as the American Riviera. Meghan and Harry's financial independence further allowed them to fund their foundation Archwell and maintain a secure and comfortable lifestyle for themselves and their children. This includes expenses for their security team, which we know that the royal family, specifically King Charles, refused to pay for their security and they also funded things such as staff so, such as child care providers and gardeners and housekeepers we can imagine as well as it helped them to maintain an extensive wardrobe of designer clothes and accessories which the entire world enjoys seeing them wear while they might receive discounts or gifts from designers, they obviously still invest significantly in their appearance because that's a huge part of their appeal to their fans, right? Also, I think in terms of what their financial independence has meant is that they've had to pay for their own transportation and their transportation choices reflect their status. Um, so they have the Land Rover, I think, is one of their favorite cars, and their transportation choices also involve the use of private and chartered jets from time to time. So that all is a big cost, of course. Despite their newfound 
independence, their financial independence, as well as just their independence in general, Harry and Meghan have maintained and remain committed to philanthropy. So R12 supports numerous causes, including mental health and social justice, showcasing their dedication to giving back to society. And they do give back generously. This independent path has also helped them to avoid the financial uncertainty faced by other royals, such as Prince Andrew, who rely on allowances, quote unquote, at the monarch's discretion for royal duties. So it's sort of a quid pro quo, maybe a salary even, but it's still in the end an allowance that's at the monarch's discretion. King Charles had already stated very early on that he could not financially support Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, and this highlights the precariousness of royal stipends, in my view. In contrast, we have Prince William's substantial inheritance from the Duchy of Cornwall that would not have extended to Harry. So their financial independence has meant that they don't have to depend on Charles and his whims and his discretion or whomever the monarch is. And I think that's very, very important for their sense of stability and financial well-being. In my view, by seeking financial independence, the Sussexes ensured their autonomy and security. Looking ahead, I think that the couple continues to explore opportunities from Megan's potential cooking show with Netflix to American Riviera Orchard, her lifestyle brand, to various investments in real estate ventures, to other Netflix shows that Harry is currently working on or will be working on in the near future. The couple's proactive approach to financial independence has not only secured their future, but it has also allowed them to redefine their roles beyond the constraints of royal duties. So all in all, I think that their search for financial independence has been successful. And I think that they were smart and intelligent to move away from the royal family and seek financial independence. I think that it looks very, very good on them. So that's all for this one. See you in the next one. Take care. Bye.